Welcome to the Dice Tower, a series of video reviews about board and card games. Here are your hosts, Tom Vassell and Sam Healy. Vikings! Who doesn't love Vikings? Wait, who are you? I'm Tom Basil. I'm I'm Sam Healy, just in case you forgot. Vikings! <laughs> Anyhow, uh, today we're talking about a game from Catalyst Games called The Yarrow. Now this is, might seem familiar to this game called The Duke. That's because it is. It's the same game system. It is not the exact same game. In fact, they play... Well, they play the same way, but the pieces are very different. And in fact, you can combine them. Now, if you look at the Duke here, you'll notice that uh, this was a nominee for Best Two-Player Game in 2013. So you can assume that we may like this. But don't assume yet. Watch it, and we'll tell you. The game takes place on a small board that is 36 squares, 6 by 6. One player plays the white team and is going to place their Jarl in one of these two spots on the edge of the board and place two Freemen uh, next to it on any sides you want. The other player is going to do the same thing and then the game begins. Now on my turn I have two different options that I can do. I can either draw a tile from the bag, so I can just reach in here, randomly pull out a tile and I'll look at that tile. There's two sides to each tile. I'm going to place it in the side with the black pawn with the white background. And I have to place it adjacent to my Jarl. Which means if there's no places adjacent to my Jarl, I can't take that action. Another action I can take is to move one of my pieces. Now let's look here at the, the Freeman here. You'll notice on the Freeman, he has a diagram of how he can move. He can move either one space behind him, which he can't do because the Jarl's there. Or he can move here. Or he can move here. He can also move two spaces in front of him. A dot means you can move to that spot. The large dot means you can capture someone. So if this Fremen was here, I would capture them and remove them from the board. Uh, the little dot, you can't do that. So if this guy's here, I can't move there because I can only move there if the spot is empty. This square, back, uh, this square means I'm blocked from someone coming in that direction. So if there was a piece that could capture me straight on, then I would be safe from them and from that direction. Now, once I move, let's say I move here, you will then flip it over. And you'll see that there's a completely different movement pattern on it now. Now he can go one space forward, sideways or reverse, and he can only capture forward or the three behind him. Each piece has a very different style of moving. You'll notice the Yarrow can move. You can see he can move one space in this direction, but he also has these clear white circles. That means he can jump. So even if there was a piece uh, maybe blocking him, he could jump over to that spot. And then again, when you move him, you'll flip him over and you'll see he's protected from diagonal attacks and he'll do a different jumping pattern. And so that's pretty much it. I'm just gonna show you some examples of different pieces. Whenever you bring a piece out, it always starts on one specific side Although there are a few pieces in this set that can start on either side. So you can pick which side they're going to start on. For example, the Huntsman here, he can start on this side, which kind of gives him a shot to the left, or on this side. Now you'll notice he's a star on him. A star means you can attack someone and take them off, but you don't actually move. And so, for example, a Smearman here can attack someone diagonally here, if there was a piece here, and take it out without the Smearman moving. That's it. That's the rules of the game. You're going to keep going until you have taken out your opponent's Jarl. When you capture your opponent's Jarl, you win the game. You also can play against the Duke. You'll notice here's the pieces from the Duke. They also fit on the board. They have different movement styles and different, you know, but the, the game itself will work fine one against the other. All right, now, I don't believe when we played this, you had ever played the Duke. No, I have not. Okay, so this was Sam's first time, so let's get your impressions. Uh, for first, back components, what do you think of the, the little backlight plastic dice material? Awesome! <laughs> Loved them. Yeah, it's, it, it was, I was like, I don't know, I really like the wood in the Duke, but it beats out the wood a little bit. Yeah. Except, um, sometimes it, I had to look a little closely at the, the white on the black pieces. But it was, that, that's only could be lighting. Yeah. And what's really neat about these, if you notice, they have notches in the side. And so I checked up on that, and that's deliberate. 
Now the notches are in different places in all of them, so you can't like feel, oh, you know, right, this right, has right. two notches or whatever. But it just kind of gives it more of an authentic look. Yeah, like battle worn. Yeah, so I mean, it feels like it's not stone, okay, right. which is what these guys would have played on. Right. Now, other than that, if you're here because you love the TV show, I would argue that you're not going to get a lot of the TV show in this box. Well, it's, other, it's an abstract strategy game. Other than possibly, and I've only watched a couple of episodes of Vikings, so I wouldn't really uh, know all of this. I don't even know all of the main characters' names. But unless they used the names of the characters on the actual pieces, um, I, I don't know. I, I really have no idea. But it, it definitely doesn't give you the feel of the TV show. <laughs> well, that's fine. I don't mind that. This is supposed to be like a game they would play. Correct. So this is an abstract strategy game, think chess, but the neat aspect of this one is your move is written on the piece. So you never have to say, how does this piece move? Mm -hmm. It's right there. Right. Also, each piece has that double-sided thing, which is a brilliant concept to me. Yes. You know, because you move, and then you flip, and you're something different. So you have to kind of think ahead, and I think there's so many options that, like, if I was playing a chess grandmaster, yeah. he would probably beat me. But I don't feel like he could destroy me as much because he would have to think about the different options. Right. Well, I think with a chess grandmaster, they are a master of the chess system, which this is, I guess, loosely based upon. But the fact that you have all of those different kinds of moves, um, you would probably be able to get a few good games in before he just started demolishing you. <laughs> so what did you think of the game overall? The game overall is actually uh, very inviting to me. It's uh, one of the, It's the kind of strategy abstract strategy game that I enjoy uh, where uh, it's very like uh, Onitama and I really enjoyed Onitama the, the difference is with Onitama you're sharing the same pieces here you're not sharing the same pieces although you do have the same pieces um, so and you're restricted to what you have on the board and what you draw out of the bag um, so it, it, it's, it hits that same vein for me with Onitama where it's uh, very abstract. It's kind of a closed abstract system. If if I get if you get what I mean there, there's not an infinite number of possibilities. So you can focus on the board, uh, and you focus on the on the, the the tactics and the strategy of your opponent. Um, and it's it's a simple abstract strategy game. So I guess that's where that's where uh, it falls into me, and I, I really enjoyed it. So let's talk about this briefly compared to the Duke, because I played both. Uh, the Duke and this are compatible. In fact, you can play an army of the Duke against the army of the Earl, which is a very interesting matchup. There are differences. In the Duke, there's a lot of pieces that slide, have the Rook-style move, where you can move across the board. That's actually not in this game at all. There's more special abilities in the Duke. If you're teaching someone new to the system, the Jarl is a better way to go. Hmm. The Jarl has much more blocking abilities, though. A lot of the pieces have blocks, and... And we found ourselves many times kind of in a like a gridlock, a gridlock, and you have to kind of figure a way to get out of the gridlock. When right. the Duke, it's more of a attack, shoot, boom, boom. Here it's more like block, block, block. Ah, you weren't blocking that direction. I got you. Yeah. And so it, I felt very tense yeah. playing this. And while you can play it on a light level, it's not that hard to learn at all, mm -hmm. you can really get into this. Yeah. I mean, you can really sit there and say, okay, we need to pull out the chess clock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Because you can, you can get, especially in those gridlock situations, what is the best move for me to do? And you can really kind of paralyze yourself with trying to think of all the different possibilities. And that might take away from the game a little bit. I guess. I don't mind so much. And I also love the fact that when all else fails, you're like, all right, pulling in the bag. Come on, give me a cool piece. And you're like, ooh, this yeah. piece will fit in this situation. Right. Now, that adds a bit of luck. Mm -hmm. But I never... It never, it never feels too lucky because you have the same amount of pieces. Yeah. And you position your duke and try to pull a piece out. Yarl. Don't let your duke... Du <laughs> Don't let your yarl get stuck in a corner. No one puts yarl on the corner. Or on the back wall. And then have pieces on both the sides and the top. So where you can't pull any more things out of the bag. Right, because it can get very... It can get very, like, exciting to pull pieces from the bag. You're like, piece, piece, piece. But if you do that, you actually have to use those pieces. Your opponent can just pick them off then and kill you. Right. So for me, this gets two axes up. One of my favorite abstract strategy games. Actually, probably my favorite. Um, the Duke and the Yarl. I'm, I'm going to mix them together and use... I basically have four different armies to use now. like that very much. It's a great system. This is a great implementation and the best for people new to the system. Cool. I'm going to go ahead and give this... Uh, 
I'm not glowing about it, so I'll give it one and a half Shield Maidens up. Probably my favorite uh, piece in, in, in the whole game, Shield Maidens. Really cool. you got to check it out, though. All righty. Until next time, I'm Tom Basso. And I'm Sam Healy. And you've been watching The Yarl. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. <laughs>